Well, boy, do I have a wonderful surprise for you today. Uh, basically, just by popular demand and a resounding chorus of voices who asked if they could see the inside to my friend John Terman's home because you so loved his outside. Well, that's my treat for you today. We're going to go inside. Actually, Stuart and I got here a little bit early because I wanted to revisit this unbelievable outdoor living room that has all of John's signature touches. And we're going to hold him uh, to what he said earlier in the video, which we'll put a link above. If you didn't get to see the garden tour, then by all means, you're gonna wanna watch it. And we talked a lot about how the outdoor space should be an extension of the indoor space. And so we're gonna hold him to that and we're gonna go inside and we're going to really kind of deconstruct his methodology of how the inside informs the outside and the reverse, how the outside informs the inside. But I wanted to go back over and show you some close-ups of some of the things you commented on most because these are just brilliant in their execution and in their originality and basically uh, just the, the real aesthetic punch that it gives to this space. So I wanted to show this to you again. This was fence post remnants with some kind of disc. It was some kind of, was this a hubcap, a hubcap disc that my friend Roger made, these sunflowers. There's one here and there's one over there. And I, so many of you commented on that and I just thought what a wonderful way to reuse, recycle, repurpose. So I wanted to show that again. And then probably the other most commented thing on was how he uses some of his blue and white broken pottery as kind of a decorative mulch, both in the garden beds and in his pots. And then that rhythm and repetition and ribbon of blue that permeates the entire space. And he very kindly in the comments went back and answered what this color of blue was. So many of you wanted to know what the blue exterior blue was on the doors. He will tell us about that. It was a Sherman Williams color. And he's really gonna fill in a lot of the gaps and answer a lot of the questions that you had. But Stuart, if you don't mind just doing a beautiful pan of this incredible space with all of its detailing and John, as I, as I said in the garden tour, he is an interior designer. He is a self-professed and self-confessed maximalist who really indulges his love of layering. And you can see that in a lot of the architectural pieces that he uses in his plant selections, in his very appropriately labeled, the other thing you guys commented on, his bottle bouquets that Stuart gave the moniker to, which I just love. There's one in the distance there. There is a miniature one here. It's got very much of a Santa Fe vibe, a city that's near and dear to both of our hearts. And then we're just gonna give you a little tiny bit of a tease and a glimpse into his living room. Before we go back around to the front door, I don't know if he knows that we're already here and we snuck onto his back veranda. But now Stuart, let's walk around to the front. And since you're a guest as am I, we will just go in the guest entrance, which is the front door of this 1928 house within spitting distance of the Oklahoma City State Capitol. So let's come this way. So here is the brilliant entrance into the, the front door of this old Spanish adobe, uh, Spanish colonial home. We talked about this section that he added on this bricked in area that's got again his signature blue in both plant material and in all of the glossy pottery, the glazed pottery. And then by the front door, of course, 
There is another bottle bouquet, but in this bottle bouquet, Stuart, look, he's got not only blue bottles, and how fun must it have been <laughs> to, to party and drink the contents of these bottles to create this bottle bouquet, but he's also got some beautiful glass orbs in here. And I even kind of like the way that they're dusty and weathered and probably how sometimes they look very aged with a veneer of dust, but then after a rain, how crystalline and clear they probably look. So this is how you're greeted, wonderful light fixtures, just appointments everywhere you look. It's a little bit overwhelming and I can already tell that I'm, I, I, I'm so in love with John's home. I know I'm gonna be a little overwhelmed myself when we go in. So we're gonna to try to break this up into some manageable components. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide this house tour into two sections. The original old house, and we'll put that in one video. And in the second video, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to watch it. We're going to put the extension and the add-ons and how he managed to make the two segue seamlessly and beautifully. So let's see if he is ready for us. I love the fact that it's got an old doorbell and it works. Hey, Hello. John, how good are you? To Come see in. You. Thank you, good sweetie. To see you. It is so nice of Hi, you Stuart. to indulge us. Okay. So first of all, can I just say, I am always so happily surprised when one of these old doorbells work. How charming is that? Isn't that great? And, and it did have to be repaired, so I'll say that, but it is the original doorbell, so. It, it, I just, yeah. I love it. I love the sound of it. I, I love too. the feel of it. It's a very kind of sensual, experiential thing that it's I just absolutely. A little different than a, than a ring. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, than a, home, than a, a, a new home in the right. suburbs. So. Look, I, I'm just, I, I told our, our viewers, if it's okay with you, what I'd like to do is maybe do this in two parts. Okay. There is it's such a visual extravaganza uh, that I'm, I know everybody's going to want to really absorb and deconstruct all of your appointments and your vignettes. There's just so much to see everywhere. So we might divide it up. Okay, that works for me. So maybe we thought the old original part of the house mm -hmm. and then the add-on. Okay. And I don't know if you told your, reminded your viewers, but uh, this is in the um, historical Lincoln Terrace neighborhood, which is a, a protected neighborhood right by the state capitol. And the house was built in 1928 by a prominent um, Oklahoma City builder. Um, and um, I think I'm the sixth owner of it. Really? So it, it, it was a nice house, I think, at one point, and then I think it was a rental. Not so cool. Yeah. And then uh, the person before me started working on it again, and then I started showing spent it. 22 years working on it myself. Yeah, so, yeah. so but, you, you both showed it yes. a lot of love. And, and by the way, you were like a block from the governor's mansion. Yes, yes. The Capitol's a block one way, and the governor's mansion is not even a block the other way. So. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, <laughs> So if you want to drive by John's house like you guys drive by my house, now I'm giving you a little clue to where, uh, okay. to where it is. You'll probably recognize it. This door is incredible. Yeah, there's some great details. And it, it appears to me that um, when they built the house that they probably bought a package of things. And I think the front door, the stair banister, and there are three light fixtures in the house that all have a similar motif on them. Um, and you used to could do that. I mean, those were the days of you know Sears homes and uh -huh. that sort of thing. And so there, you could buy things to, to use in a yeah. home that you were building to give it the character and the history that you were looking for. But the quality um, of it. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. door is so heavy. Absolutely. I mean, so. and what's that ringing? So it's my bells on the back of the door. So, so well, of course yeah. you have. Of course you have bells. And, and not just at Christmas time on the back of no, the door. No, those are always there. So my um, and there's a little story about that. So I have a cousin or I have cousins who are now in their 90s that live in Nashville. And um, a couple of years ago, they had to downsize, and so I helped them do that. But they had those bells on their front door. So all my life going there, I had heard those bells ring when we went in. And so it was just a cool thing to bring to bring them to my house. That was one Wait, way to do it. You know, so, I have some antique um, sleigh bells that belong yeah. to my mom that she always had hanging by the fireplace. And I, I but I bring mine out at Christmas. You've got, yeah, you've mine got your well, they're on a blue cord, of course, so they can stay out all the time. Well, duh, so, duh. <laughs> and I didn't do that. He did it. So, he did it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this room. Look at the the. Um, first of all. You have a pretty fabulous canvas to work with. Yes. Well, when I walked in the first time and saw the ceiling um, with these beams and the, the boards, it just, it was like, okay, this could work. I mean, I'd been looking for a house for quite some time, couldn't find one. And the door was the first clue. 
yeah. came around the corner and looked up in here and I was like, oh my gosh. Swoon. Yeah, it was yeah. just like, okay, this will work. I don't yeah. care what the rest looks like, this will work. Arch doorways. Um, Tell me about the walls. Very, so, look very well, adobe, very are, Spanish. And it's just a traditional um, plaster on lath, but then they've been treated to look like um, hand adobe, you know, hand done adobe. Yeah. Um, which I, I almost positive is original to the house because it's everywhere in, in the old part of the house. Well, so. it, it is just, it's just fabulous. So. I, there's just so much to look at here. I just, I, someday I'm going to come in with a bottle of wine and I'm just going to drink the whole bottle myself <laughs> and do, do nothing. <laughs> but take the time to really wander, look, and demystify your, the brilliance of your layering. Now, I said earlier on your porch that you are a self-professed maximalist. Yes, I am. And have you always been that way? Has it evolved over time? Well, this is also a story. I have lots of stories, so you may get tired of them. But um, in, I, I, good, I'm going to give away my age. So I was born in 1960, and my parents built a Better Homes and Gardens idea home from 1960. So it was this ranch, contemporary, you know, the very end of mid-century. They completely furnished it in mid-century modern furniture. Everything was spare and minimal and all that. And I resisted that as a child even. Um, I mean, I, I appreciated what my grandparents had. I uh -huh. loved all their stuff, you know, and, and I, I mean, that's when I started with the blue and white, even when I was probably 10 or something and started wow. thinking about that. Um, but anyway, I just went completely opposite. Of course, now I completely appreciate that I grew up in that fabulous house. Yes. And I have a couple of pieces that, um, you know, that were in it. But uh, for the most part, I'm, I'm a traditionalist and a, and a maximalist, as you say. Right. So. And, but I, I think it's important that you had the, maybe the little embryon, embryonic um, hints when you were young, that I this did. might be your profession, profession later on, Absolutely. and you came by it very naturally. And did they have a starburst clock? We did not have a starburst clock. We had some weird clock, though. It was, it was, uh, there was a clock, but it wasn't a starburst. But we, we had an orange sofa that was probably nine feet. Oh, we did too. Uh, oh yeah. Oh and, yeah. And then some of the accent colors were green, and that well, green and orange are two of my least favorite colors together. <gasps> Avocado like green. Said, it wasn't. It was bottle green. This bright, <gasps> vibrant really? kind of bottle. It was a pretty color. Now that's uh, kind of come back with around. Orange, and it just yeah, and I absolutely see it. But the it's, '70s you know, version. It's not blue and white. So <laughs> anyhow, right. obviously this is an explosion of beautiful blue and white um you've got this popular look which i have to say i have in my home too the white slip covers is, is this just a canvas it is uh, in fact it was just a very inexpensive canvas that i purchased and we had slip covers made for them yeah um, one of the things i learned um, when you have a lot of stuff sometimes you have to have some simple things mm -hmm. so having a, a very neutral upholstery with all this stuff around it you know gives you a, a silent space or a quiet space i call it um, you'll also see a couple of places in one of them, which is actually a, a continuation from outside. Um, Stuart, when you turn around and look at the chimney on the fireplace, you'll see that I didn't put anything on it because I wanted a place to uh -huh. rest your eye. Right. Um, and it's the same way outside as well. So you get this, I know one of the, somebody commented they thought there should be something on the outside of the house. And I'm like, no, that's my quiet space on the yeah. outside. And I did the same thing in here. Um, and also, um, and Stuart, I'm doing this to you again, on the other side of you, I chose this, it's not really, it's not old, it's made to look old, but just again, something kind of neutral mm -hmm. and big instead of having some huge painting over the sofa. Uh, because there is, as you see on both ends of the room, a lot of confusion and so um, there's a lot of a, color a, a beautiful pattern. tension. Again, a, a great canvas. They help contribute to the backdrop and the canvas of it, and also the the a little bit the tension, the brilliant tension between large things, large uncluttered mm -hmm. things, and then the heavily detailed. <laughs> Lots of layering. Yes, uh, very heavily layered, detailed compositions, largely of blue and white. Lots of blue and white. That you have. Are these bookshelves original to they the They were house? not, they were not. That was I, one of the things, first things I did actually when I moved here was started with those bookshelves and you'll see lots more have happened since then, but uh, this was the first place to do it. And one of the things, and we may talk about this some more later, but when you have a lot of stuff, having bookshelves to contain it and to manage it is a really good way to show it all off. And you still get some, um, well, you've got some lines around all the stuff and it, it just kind of holds it. And so you yeah. can just keep layering um, and creating these little vignettes of things. So I think it's, it's similar to me for my protege. It's kind of like organized chaos. It is, absolutely. The stuff within the confines of the infrastructure for me, my box or whatever for you, for your your um, bookshelves, mm -hmm. it kind of contains a lot of what could be visually discordant. Absolutely. But you have it contained and so it makes sense. 
And the other thing is, is we're drawn to pattern. And so as humans, we mm -hmm. are, and you've got a wonderful pattern of this blue and white uh, and, and textures and the way that you have, but even the way you've like composed your stack of books and things looks very intentional to me. It, it is very intentional, yes. I, I definitely have gone through and done each shelf and, and over time, I mean, it, sort of you kind of just drop things in place and then you stand back and look, does this work or not? Right. Sometimes it does not. Sometimes it does, but um, you well, But isn't that the fun of it? it? Oh, that's what makes it great fun. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and makes it a dynamic thing and not a static Absolutely, thing so yes, that your, your home, even to your own eye, always looks fresh. The other thing I've noticed is, is that you didn't skimp on the, in building the bookshelves to make sure that they really look very much indigenous to the house, oh. even though they weren't, because they look formidable. They don't look like they were from Ikea or something. Right. They have the same heft, the same visual weight as the original part of the house with these fabulous windows. I love the way also that you repeated the look in the slip covers in your window treatments. Yeah, I wanted something very simple. Again, you just have to have some simplicity when you do all this stuff. Uh, if you tried to do a window treatment that covered the window or had a pattern or something like that, you would just create so much confusion that it would just all, it kind of becomes muddy. It's kind of the way I look at it. Um, you need something to clarify it. I think, you, yeah, I really, to cleanse your palate, Yes. I think, your visual palate, and this does this brilliantly, but I mean, for those of you guys that are blue and white lovers, oh my gosh, you are going to want to stop this video on practically every frame to look at things. Tell me the story. It looks very Japanese. Of the picture? Again, a thrift store find, truly. You're kidding! And I really think it came out of, of an Asian restaurant. When I got it, it was completely covered in grime. It took me a long time to get all the grease and all the stuff off of it. But of course, I love the color um, and, and you know just the scene in it. And I think it works so well with the other Asian-inspired things I have. So um, And very simple but, but lines against... But it was against... truly, in fact, and you can't see it from here probably, but the frame is really pretty cool, too. Can you see it? Good. Um, and, and I'm going to say it was 10 bucks, so, you know. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> Stuart's impressed. <laughs> right. Yeah, as am I. Uh, the, the value of thrifting, you just can't get those one-of-a-kind, unbelievable things well, any, and, any place else. And this week, thanks to you, I went to one of our um, local antique stores that you did a video of recently. And oh, I hadn't been in a long time. Antique, antique Avenue. Avenue. Uh, Isn't it just wonderful? Well, did you meet Erin? Well, I did. she was not there when I was there, but... Uh, I remember her old store and I loved it. And when I found out she was at this, this place, I was like, oh, I have to go again. So I was looking around and, and I'm kind of relating this back to the thrift store find up here, but I found a new piece of art that just spoke to me again because it was blue. And it was just yes. this sweet little thing. Who knows when it was done. Um, I'm sure it's some amateur watercolorist. You it know. doesn't matter uh, though, it doesn't matter. It? But it just spoke to me when I was in there. And of course it, um, you know, and again, it was like, I think it was 40 bucks. You know, things have gone but out. You're just, you just the right spot for uh, it. Well, I did a, little, did a little work on this wall. I had been collecting things that had not been hung. So this is something that happened recently. Um, I took about half of it down and added four pieces. So, so um, we're going to do, you guys, um, a, a, a little wrap up because, again, I... I, there's so many, so many of these things you can try at home, but please pay attention to, to John. We're going to do a wrap up where you give us some of your best okay. professional design tips because I think gallery walls are so popular right now, but I think there are some ways to do them well and maybe less. Absolutely. No. Less than, less right. than well. Should, right. we, should we put yes, it that way? True. So we want to talk a little bit about you'll, that. You'll see two other gallery walls in our okay. house. So. Versus this very clean look, which I tend to do more, which is the geometric linearity of ha of hanging like pieces mm -hmm. together in a way that can f frame the void of your right. beautiful chimney. So that's just that's really just incredible. I see. Don't you think that it gives a window into into a person when you look through? the contents of their bookshelves and uh, in fact that book you just went to has a great title uh, may i come in and of course being in this business that we both are um, it's the thing we want to do the most is go in somebody's house so this is a, yeah. a woman who um, in new york wendy goodman who went to all these houses she'd been to and put this wonderful book together uh, talking about it so um, yeah 
it's very, I was telling you, John is not familiar with quintessence. If, if you've got to watch some right. of those videos where they do that, they go into some of the, the major tastemakers of our time and they look at their interiors and it's so fun to be, it it's so fun to be a voyeur. Here is another takeaway, you guys. Look at the way you've got. Now, granted, we don't do CDs very much <laughs> Again, anymore. My age. But, but <laughs> nevertheless, uh, any variety of things that you have that you're wanting to contain mm -hmm. and store could all be categorized in that way. They look like the, they were custom made for this space. But I have found just by Googling, well, baskets that fit right. this space, you can typically come up with something that and, looks and custom. And that happened before we could Google. So this was, I found one at Target that fit, and I was, so then I ended up going to five Targets to find enough, because of course they only had two at each Target. So it was a bit of a trek. I couldn't just have them sent on my Amazon Prime, uh, right. but it did work out well, so. Well, I, the, another key that you're gonna discuss with us a little bit later, you, you have a very eclectic vibe. So in these bookshelves, you've got old things, you've got new things, you've got Asian things, you've got Spanish colonial things. Mm -hmm. You have a whole ensemble of different kinds of, of historical comportments that come into play. You're going to talk about some tips to how, yes, you, how, you, how you make it look homogenous and consonant together with so many disparate kinds of things. Well, I could spend a month in this room and I may come and do that sometime <laughs> if your couch is comfortable. Oh, they are. Um, and we could spend so much time in here. But another thing I want to impress upon you is, is I know that as I get older, I, I am trying to declutter a little bit because I'm a layering person too, mm -hmm. but lots of layers come with, with you, you know, we have to take care of more stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and that comes with time and responsibility. So I could easily see you could come in here. And by the way, here's a tease. John is gonna come to my house. <laughs> I can't wait. And we're gonna kind of go over some, just some things, how he can help me kind of zhuzh up my house. We have a lot in common. Um, but also I could, I could easily see someone who was more of a minimalist or heading in that direction, how they could come in here and they could edit out 50% of what you have and it would still very much Absolutely. have the same warmth, the same eclectic, vibrant feel of things that have been collected over time. That's true, and, and one, of, one of the fears in the, um, the work I do with my clients is that I don't, I want them to see my house, of course, because I love it, but it is a little intimidating. And so I don't want them to think that this is what it takes to, to create a warm look uh, or even a minimalist look, which I can right. do too, uh, you know, but this is the way I choose to live and I love it. Uh, I like too many things, but it is a little scary for people. So I like to get going with them before they ever see what comes out yes. of me, you know, and, yes. and um, it makes a difference, I think. Well, so. and, I, and I think there are so many analogies to gardening because there are, I, I think what I like to try to impress on people, they will say, oh, if you came to my house, you would be appalled at my garden or whatever. There are so many different languages and forms of beauty, there and there's no typically one right way. There is just the way that is right for you. Absolutely. And I think that's what makes it that's what resonates with people is if well, sometimes they don't quite know how to execute that. it or express yeah. it and so they need yeah. our help uh, yeah. you know to, to nudge them along but but absolutely I want to, I always want to try to do what uh, what I think is right for the client um, uh -huh. it's not something I don't want to impose myself on in fact I did that one time long 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 time ago someone loved my house and she was I want this and I said okay well we can do it and it was a small space so we could do it it was, the, it was a disaster, I will have to tell you. It just You just can't push that on somebody. Well, we and learned, she thought she we? wanted it. She really didn't. So, yeah. you know. I, so it's about, it's about asking yourself tough it questions. Is. I, I um, have a book coming out yes, you in do. March. And a lot of what I talk about is how you deconstruct something to get it to, a, mm -hmm. to look the way that is just right for you. That's Not for true. anybody else, but just right for you. Okay, so let's, like I say, I could be here for forever. Stuart's probably going like this. Yeah. Get on with it, get so on with it. Before we leave this room, I just wanna show you that it does connect to the outdoor room. Yes, and so this uh, is what I, what, what, excuse me for interrupting uh, no, you, John, good. but this is what I wanted to see if you held true to your promise. That so what do you think? Oh my gosh, <laughs> it is a seamless, it is a seamless extension of your home. So many people wanted to know, what, what color is this? That is a Sherwin Williams regatta. And um, I did put, I, I answered some questions on the garden video 
um, with the paint number. I don't remember that off the top of my head, but I've told you that one and the and it's other two colors outside. So there are three paint colors for outside. Okay. Regatta, as in a very mariner term. It is. Regatta. Yeah. And you can see that it is just seamless. It is. Indoors and out. And, I, and, and oh my gosh, can I just say how much, really how much I love I screen sure doors, right. these old, <laughs> you know? Because I think gardens should be sensual and experiential. And I think home should be too. I agree. I love yeah. that sound. Well, this is just this is just very very wonderful. Okay, again, tactile. Everything is just loved, and I can tell collected over time. So let's go. So this is still original to the house. Yes. Where? What is your source on great rugs? Um, well, uh, there's a local place here, Tipperies, where I buy some things. The living room where I came from there, the one in my office did. Uh, this one, I used to work in retail. This was something that was going to be dumped, and I paid 20 bucks for it. So, um, it used to, remember when we used to have the Ralph Lauren shops? Oh, gosh, yeah. Tricked them all out. Well, this was one of the pieces in it. Uh, so, and then the one behind you, which is a favorite, but my really favorite one's in the back. But this belonged to um, a sort of in law relative who. Um, has been deceased for many, many years, and it was in their house. So, but then Tabriz restored it for me, which was great. That is uh, that so. is wonderful. It's so interesting. One of the the uh, my husband's original employees. He is an office furnishings uh -huh. de designs and outfits office furniture and what and. and office complexes and one of his first designers was one of the original Ralph Lauren store well, designers. You know those fixtures used to be made in Oklahoma. I know. Uh, which was well, so interesting. Well let's turn that yeah. aside. Yeah this is another thing like VC Clark's that I heard right. to earlier. This is very much of a Harold's Harold's it is. thing. You know, that, the, yeah. Even though the preppy look started on the East Coast, we did it really well. We in did. Oh yeah, so, yeah. because yeah. we we had the real Western we flair, did, right. Western interface. Okay, so you've got a wonderful sideboard here with more of your blue and white on it, and then so this is uh, this is your office. It's my office now. It, the original purpose of this room in the house was the master bedroom. Uh, there is a full bathroom and a closet up to these spaces. Um, but I, um, I really think, based on the built-ins on this wall, which seems to have been here forever, mm -hmm. I think it was probably always used as a, a sitting room or a TV uh -huh. room or an office or something. I don't know. Uh, but when I um, opened my own business, I made this my office. So it's a great place to work. Well, it is. Um, it is just lovely. It really <laughs> is. You and I obviously share an obsession with books almost every room of your house and every room of my house, with the exception of the bathrooms, look like they're libraries. That's and I'm really, this is something I'm struggling with. Really? Uh, how do you call out things that... I can't, I don't. I just keep collecting. You just so keep right. collecting. And you'll see, I mean, I even have duplicates of things and I, I always think, oh, I'll give one of these to somebody that means something to me. But then at the other time I'll think, oh, but I could take that book apart and frame all those beautiful things that are in it, you know. Right. So then I don't do it. So Yeah. Um, and the other thing with me that's a danger. Can I have three copies of that one, see? Well, I, well then you can give one of those. <laughs> right, I could give one of those. You could give that to me for Christmas. I could give that to you. <laughs> so I, I was talking about my, my sons and they also, I, now I've got all of their books right. and things that they don't want me to get rid of. The other thing that my, this is my takeaway tip. <laughs> I was just looking, I, I was just saying, oh, I just looked at this book yesterday. I've got the same one. But here's my takeaway tip. Okay. If you are pulling out your books and you're starting to get rid of, like right now I've got way too many gardening books and I can gift those to people yes. who are at the beginning of their gardening career. But my one tip is, and I bet you do the same thing. I I am constantly tucking little mementos in books mm. of thank you notes, right. of photographs, of messages people have sent me, little kind of, of communication clediments that I've put in those books. Mm. And then I'm always afraid I'm going to give a book away without salvaging something that is very priced to me in it. So you really have to shake yes, it. Yes, you do. Just like you get the clean out the pockets of uh -huh. anything or underneath the cushions. I really have to be very, very careful that I empty them out. I agree with you. But on the other hand, when the book does get to an estate sale or the thrift uh -huh. store or whatever, and then someone else purchases it, they get the best treasures. Uh, I have yes. found so many cute things in books that yeah. I never would have known about. 
And a lot of times there'll be something that has something to do with that book, you know, about a person in it or whatever. Uh -huh. It's so interesting. So now at least if you do give but it away, true. that someone else benefits yeah. from it. Or so, a, 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 and, uh, and a sense of history. I yes. think that just that real it sense really of does, history. So. Okay, now this is a weird thing, but that I love about you. John even said we could go into his bathrooms because of course your bathrooms are also decorated. Are, so. so Stuart, uh, go in and look at you have artwork. So that's my collection of, of interior renderings. And um, some of them look fabulous, like they really date back well, to... The big one um, is from my cousin, and he did that in the 60s. Um, and then the one right under it is actually his living room. Um, and he, he did this, and I have all of them. He did a program for a group of people in Nashville, and he did, um, oh, I think they're 10 of these boards that he did these wonderful renderings and he had all the samples and all the stuff to go with it. Well, he kept the boards and so when they moved, they were in the attic yeah. and I couldn't throw them away. So I brought them all home and I framed this one. Um, oh, that one is just, man, it, talk about jettisoning you back yeah. to another era and so, another time. And the one that Stuart's looking at right now, that living room was done in, I think, probably the late 60s um, and Bloomingdale's uh, decorating was the thing, this country front. And so Jay added those fake beams and did that, and then of course in the 70s it got all redone, so. Oh yeah, but. it's a, which is probably why you're eclectic in philosophy, because you love things from so many different, I do, I like from all so the periods, different eras. I really do. Um, and, and Stuart and I are gonna apologize, he's doing a great job, as is the camera, but this is a house, so it's, I mean, it was, we're not stage lighting. Right. To really do shooting is is the floor original. That to is the original, house? and wow. the and the wall tiles original in there. I think I've it has got a, a very similar yeah. tile in my second in my guest bath. I love that little detail on the little trim piece. Yes. Um, the uh, the problem is when some of the like the toilet paper inset when it cracks or yeah. <laughs> breaks, kind of no, hard to problems. find a replacement they are for that very stuff. Hard, so. so Stuart, did you get a three? 60 and you've got lots of texture that's incorporated in textiles framed textiles mm -hmm. uh blankets quilts um loving loving this vibe so when we get to my house and i, like I love it. one thing i noticed one appointment that i need you to help me with is all of your your pillows seem to be more down filled and flat and squishy Which is versus overly stuffed with foam, with like, you know. I have, a, I have an abhorrence for those. A la pottery uh, barn, and that's how some of mine are, and I need to get rid of the And there's actually, stuff. I've been using a, a faux down uh, material, which gets, this one actually goes down, but the ones in the living room are done with this other, and it's a great squishy feel, and um, I love it, so it's really nice. Well, so. and then I think, and, and especially if it's faux down for those of us with allergies, right. as, as am right. I, which is one of the reasons I don't have a lot of it, <laughs> because I, I could. Yeah. Okay, this is this is just great and so comfortable. I could, you know, I could just come in and hang out here while you're working, John. Look <laughs> well, up sometimes children. I hang out there when I'm working. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A good I do thing. the same thing in my office. So yeah, yeah it's absolutely. A, I love it. This is wonderful. Okay, so now let's come back here, and we're going to give you a glimpse over Stuart into the dining room, which almost has, and we're going to go in the dining room later, but it. It has a primitives vibe. It, I think an that piece of American furniture kind of causes that. And, and, um, and I'm one of these people too, when I buy furniture, I have a real hard time getting rid of it. So early in my buying, I bought a couple of um, more primitive pieces, this piece in the hallway, the sideboard in the dining room. And then that, the white piece where all the blue and white is, uh, was a piece that my grandmother had built for their country home. And of course it was this ugly brown. And when I moved here, um, I brought it here and we just painted it to match the wall. So. And then, I, and then the paint swelled the doors, so I just decided I would use that leather and time time closed. Okay, and has this great takeaway, closure. Another great, another great takeaway, as oh. is, and I did this in my in my dining room, which is a Ralph Lauren glazed red, mm -hmm. and I painted an armoire the same right. color, the same red to match the walls. So that's a great takeaway tip, you guys, especially if you've got a piece of furniture that's maybe not special. Right or maybe is special and you want to figure out a way to incorporate it into your house, then you you just make that canvas simpler by painting and, and it, it the works. same yeah. way. And it be so I did that and then you know, bought new knobs and then I said, as I said, created the way to close it. So. And bought a few more pieces of blue and white. <sighs> Tons of blue and white. That's <laughs> you, you, again, I'll get well, we need an intervention. <laughs> we need yes, we do. an intervention. <laughs> okay, can we go upstairs? Yes, let's go upstairs. So, Stuart, as you so, come by, notice some of the details on the banister because I think it's pretty cool. And, and um, this is original to the house, I'm going to guess. It is, absolutely. 
and the floors are original. Did you have to restain and refinish your we floors? We did do that, yes. Yeah. And this winding staircase, isn't it wonderful? It has a great feel with the curb, doesn't it? The other nice thing is this is older age friendly because the treads are wide mm -hmm. and not real steep. So that is just really... Come on up, Stuart, and join us. <laughs> but before you do, very, very carefully, without breaking anything, turn around. So, all right, you can, come on up, Stuart. Come on up and show what I can show first. Show what you can show first, because I'll yeah, because there's really cool stuff behind Stuart and accolades to Stuart, who does such a good job of well, of navigating these contorted spaces that we put him in. And without knocking anything over. That's the which, good, that's the... <laughs> well, sometimes we knock things that's over. That's the but skill. usually Not they're here. in my garden. What, so that, okay, so that adds me to, that is to a question. Uh -huh. um, let's go in, go in here, here? While, we, while we talk. For me, um, w one thing, so much of how you think about the now is what was informed by your past. And Very I true. grew up in one of those households where... I've got nine brothers and sisters, mm. and I grew up in a household where we, if something got broken, you got in really big trouble. Mm -hmm. And I just have the exact opposite. I think everything in your house should be used. I don't care how valuable it is. I think it shouldn't stay hidden away in a closet. If mm -hmm. it breaks, that means it was loved. Right. I mean, that doesn't mean that we're careless with our things, but to me, I'm, I would be much more concerned over broken feelings than broken objects. I the people are more right. important than the stuff. They are. And that is definitely something that informed how I think about material yeah. things growing well, up. And on that same thread, uh, growing up, one of my grandparents had a beautiful home and it was very traditional and they had all kinds of lovely things, in it, a lot of which are here. Uh -huh. uh, but when I was probably seven or eight, I would take a two card tables and put them together in the family room and cover it all with blankets. And then I would select things from the bookshelves and the, oh, off the tabletops. So you, you it didn't matter how precious it was, DNA. she would let me take all this into my house that I had built. And the only stipulation was that I had to put it all back. Um, I mean, I had to clean up after yeah. it was over. But anyway, I, that's how I learned to appreciate beautiful yeah. things. And I knew how to handle them. And, and, and the, the art of composition. Ab absolutely. And the fact that she let me, uh, you know, she trusted me to, to do yeah. that. Uh, it was pretty amazing. So I do feel like you should let anybody in your home, you know, they have to have some respect for it, but they need to learn how to love things and to appreciate you know, them. Yeah. And so I be mean, part of it. So do I want red wine on my white slip covers? No, no but, but it, it happens. happens. It happens. You know, it right. happens. I'm not going to lose sleep over <laughs> and it. And it's happened here. So. <laughs> <laughs> not for you, not for you, but it's happening. But, but it happens. It, <laughs> yes, but yeah, it does yeah, happen, definitely. So. We take ownership of those things <laughs> ourselves. So I love. I love this room. For one thing, it's got great light. It does have a good light. It has really great light. I, it feels very cozy to me because it's got kind of a low ceiling, which mm -hmm. I think sometimes is... Oh, I love it. In fact, that these kind of cove. It just uh -huh. kind of, um, I don't know, you just feel like you're in this really safe space. Um, and you're at high, which is great, mm -hmm. and then you're looking out into the yard. Yeah, so. very, very much so. And, and all of your stuff has kind of by osmosis, your blue and white stuff has come upstairs and informs, like if, if I were, I like to put words on things. So if I were gonna come in and put words on your house, probably the first word that I would put is chambray. Mm. I mean, definitely denim, chambray, in addition to obviously blue uh -huh. and texture and things like well, that. Well, and I think one of the things you pointed out too is that um, my blue things, they do have some texture to them, most of them, and they're not sweet exactly. They're, uh -huh. uh, and, I'm not, and I hate to use terms like masculine and feminine, but it is a little more masculine. Uh, yes. And I've used plaids and I've used, uh, I mean, I don't know, like you said, texture, stripes yeah. and that sort of thing. And then, yeah. then there are a few things that are sweet, like a quilt, you know, or, um, but that's, or yeah, floral no. plates on the wall or something like that. But, yeah, I uh, agree completely. And I would even say, even though my garden has some roses and flowers and things, even my own garden has a very masculine architectural feel because lots of evergreens, lots yes. of structure, even, even topiary to me has that, that it does, kind absolutely. of quality. And, my, and I'm like you, I like, I, I like romance, but not necessarily sweetness. Right, I agree. And I think there's kind of a difference. And then another cool thing about using lots of blue is if you use an, a neutral background. So you'll notice that if everything came out of this house, there would be no blue. 
It, it, Except it, on the doors, <laughs> that yeah, would be the it, only place. It very much uh, feels to me like some of the some of the bed and breakfasts in Santa mm-hmm. Fe or in Colorado or or things where you've got special things and just wonderful layering with. These are, you know, these are gorgeous, but this is a layering thing that you can do inexpensively Absolutely. and not and not just inexpensively at Walmart, but inexpensively at your thrift store. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I like to do at thrift stores is look at clothing, draperies, anything like that, if there's great fabrics of something that can be done. Okay. Well, and that fabric on that pillow used to be on this big chair. And of course it faded. And when we took the fabric off, I actually reversed it and there was enough I, there was enough oh, good fabric okay. to make one pillow, so I still have yeah. my plaid. So uh, you really should pay attention to what you're throwing away and giving away. And I do if that with tablecloths. Yeah. I'll use I'll use them on the off side, side, so that yeah. so it gives um, it gives you a double you know it does. A double use and, and more of a, a weathered older look. Stuart Stuart said about my house when you come into my house, you can't ever tell what's old or what's new or what's new and what's made to look old or. Yeah. And, and I, I guess that. that's what I love because I want everything to kind of look used and mm-hmm. loved and no, I do too. And, as you can um, see. <laughs> so. But like like this, this is the simplicity of this is just brilliant but goes so well with all of your layered stuff. Just really wonderful. And books, 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 books everywhere. everywhere. And as you said, they're everywhere with the bathrooms. And I have shelves in the bathrooms, but no books. Well, it just is, and and you do like I do. You've got them stacked everywhere. They make great little tables. Well, they do. That was too low to use the yeah. stool for a table, and some big books made it work. Yeah, for me, so. they make great little tables for topiary and they do. things, and, and they kind of frame and elevate, and lots of wicker. You've got lots of wicker. And, you know, that was the love that came from when I was probably in my 20s. You know, I just like that. And, and yeah. I, everybody, recently, there was this, in the magazines, they're all, oh, wicker's coming back. Well, I never I went away in my that. house, right? Yeah. So, my, uh, uh, some of you have seen my bedroom, and I will definitely video again, but I have three pieces of my mom's wicker in my, in my bedroom. Yeah, yeah. I, I it's, it's, it's a great, uh, again, for texture, I love it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Okay, this, wow, <laughs> this is just like, this is what I call decora- a decorating double down. Oh, really? And, okay, and so explain you... Explain that. Okay, so you double downing in a good way because what you did was you doubled down on the green of these people, which is just, I mean, remarkable. It would be, it would just be blasphemous to tear this stuff out, this tile. And, and, And what I mean by double down is that you carried that same green over to the storage and the shelving and the trim work and everything in the best in the best way. <laughs> well, when I um, first moved here, of course, I, I didn't, this is not my favorite color scheme, and I painted the walls the pale yellow, and all the trim was the pale yellow from the tile, and it just didn't work. Right. And then finally I was like, okay, I'm gonna own it. Yeah. And we're gonna do it green. And actually, I think this is a beautiful color of green. It just doesn't go with the rest of the house yeah. so much. But, but look at uh, that. And that detail is just terrific, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it made a great place to fit art pottery and some things that don't always blend in other places. And so this is one of the few places you do see green in my house. But the way you do, and it's kind of a blue green. So it is a blue green. <laughs> the other thing is, is you've continued the blue green thematic, and you've introduced the blue via your artwork and some yes. of the pottery and things like that. Even the rug has hints of, of blue in it, so it, it in no way looks like it doesn't fit in here, right. you know, it very well, much. Well, and, and when the walls were yellow, the I covered the walls in here with blue and white china. So that's how this blue and white china thing started. And then of course, it, the collection got much too big, so it went to the bedroom, yeah. and then I came back with the art pottery in the green, and I like it yeah. much better this way. So. Gosh, this reminds But they're great, these are all original fixtures, and they all really work so well. And, this um, so reminds me of my grandmother's yeah. house. So, so yeah, I mean, down to just, even the rest. Even right? the rest, right, just, that's part yeah. of it. So, yeah, um, it is. Just fabulous. So Stuart, bef- before I started to yell at you to turn around, this was what I wanted to show, is the, the wonderful, you have so many different areas for staging, mm-hmm. which is one thing I kind of feel like I don't have in my house. Mm-hmm. I don't have enough, it's an English tutor and I just don't have enough places. Places to for, do things, right. Yeah, which may be, may be a, 
a good thing. And then you've got just texture. Stuart thinks that's so funny. Don't you, Stuart? <laughs> Stuart and I have an understanding that we are free to make fun of one another. Oh, I, that's what makes life interesting. At, I like yes, doing that. So. Yes. So, and then this would be the second bedroom upstairs, but uh, my husband uses it for his yeah. office. And so he is a musician, and so these are mostly musical related wow. things and artwork and cathedrals and um, again another collection of oh and I just, yeah, just but with a different oh my word yes definitely he's a musician yes absolutely look at this Stuart this is this is and in here I'm gonna I mean we did do much simpler bookshelves we didn't want oh, um, to invest the the way. Door to make the yeah. investment and we wanted them to be somewhat removable so that if someone did want this room to be a bedroom again so we did a simpler thing although they are built they're not, but Ikea would have worked in here. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. been just fine, so. So how, how did you decide who got which office? They both are so charming. Well. And in different ways. Since I work at home. Since you work at home, <laughs> so, oh, so he home. doesn't work. He doesn't, Okay. Yet, no. Okay. Now, Stuart's daughter, I've said this before, in fact, we were at a recital for her last night she is a brilliant musician at mm. OCU. Oh, really? Yeah. And so she would find this fascinating. Yeah. Well, I, Scott is about to retire. He is the um, musician at St. Paul's Cathedral downtown. Oh, wow. And so a lot of his office oh, has wow. come home because yeah. we're in that process of, yeah. of moving all that. So yeah. um, by well, next year, just, everything will be here. So Yeah, this is just... But you'll notice there's no organ or piano, so <laughs> we don't have room for those things. Yeah. So. Well... You need, you really need space for You're Right, you really do. It wouldn't be appropriate, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Well, this um. is just, this is just lovely. So I haven't asked you, how many square feet is your house? Well, the original house was about 1,950 square feet. Okay. And then we made about a 700 foot addition to the back, so 2,650 is what. Okay, look at this wonderful fixture. So that fixture um, was in the breakfast room originally in the house, um, and the fixture from here was missing. Uh -huh. And when we did, um, well, I think I just brought that up. I brought that up here immediately because I thought it looked better in here. Mm -hmm. um, but this detail right here is the same on the stairs and on the dining room chandelier. So um, that's what makes me think that they came in a in a package deal. Right. So right in a beautiful package. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That I would love to have known what the original was in here because there was yes. a ceiling fan here when I got here. So. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Well, good. you know what. We're, we're going to have to give our, our viewers a bathroom break okay. or a snack break or something. So we're going to stop here because we've seen the original components of, of this house and how you have so brilliantly adorned adorned it. It's just, it's just incredible. So we're going to just take a break here and then you guys are going to want to make sure to go along with us for part two because we still haven't seen the redone kitchen, right. laundry room, master suite, and you're not going to want to miss it. John, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. Sure. So here you go. Here is your twofer fashion epilogue for today. So if you've held on this long, then here it is. If not, just go on to the next video. So today, my ensemble are my favorite sunglasses, my Aviator Ray-Bans. I've got, this is definitely going to age me, John, but I've got kind of a Peggy Lipton vibe yes, going yes, on from Mod Absolutely. Squad days from, from forever <laughs> ago. So I've got kind of a 60s, 70s vibe going on. Um, my shirt is from Charlotte Russe. I have had it for forever and a day. I bet I've had it for 25 years. My little crochet hippie bag actually came from my mother-in-law via me. She used to wear lots of little purses like this. I gifted this to her. And so after she passed, I took it back because it reminds me of her every time I think about it. Oh, cool. Love um, my britches came from Anthropology, and it was one of those deals where I just fell in love with them, but they weren't my size, so I had to have them tailored. <laughs> Sometimes I spend more on tailoring than I do on the object itself, but I love the work on it, and it's blue and white, so it's probably after your heart, too. Probably so. And I think my sandals came from Nordstrom Rack, and... Of course, if you've got an ensemble like this, then you have to have some kind of 60s vibe earrings. And my 60s vibe earrings, I think, came from I don't know where, because I've had these for so long. But I love hoop earrings. Okay, so John, you are always so stylishly dressed, and of course in blue and white, so what's your ensemble? 
Well, I think it's just my casual. Um, or, or not, or, not exactly work clothes, but um, okay. the next step up, because usually I'm in shorts. So, uh, but anyway, this because I am a blue person, this is my new indigo shirt from J. Crew. Just oh, I, got it. And I it's love knit. it. It's knit. It's made like an Oxford. So, but it's would a this knit. still be available still if somebody available, was looking think, for them? I think so. Okay. Okay. Uh, got it recently, though. Anyway, and then um, bonobos pants with a drawstring, which I'm not going to show you, but uh, <laughs> anyway, work well. And then my Vans classic tennis shoes, which these are about to wear out. They've got a hole in the toe, but you can see I wear them all the time. And, and that makes them so much more stylish. It I really think. does. And I love that they're a little bit dirty. And, and in fact, I have a new pair and I can't seem to break them out because they're too white. They're, so, yeah, they're just yeah. too white. So, yeah. And then I have on um, a leather bracelet that I got in Santa Fe this summer, which was too long. This is kind of cool. It was too long. So I took it to the shoe shop and they cut it and spliced it and put this twine on it to cover where they made the seam in it. So I thought that was kind of okay, cool. Okay, that, so, yeah. that is a great idea. And that's, I, I'm glad that you pointed that out because a lot of times I go to my shoe shop or whatever, I have extremely tiny wrists and I always have to have additional holes punched mm -hmm. or grommets put or something shortened or whatever. And that's a really great idea is to you know, take something that you've already got and have it tailored. Yes, your again. Have <laughs> tailoring your jewelry to you. I forgot to mention my ensemble of bracelets. You and I both love Santa Fe. Some of these things came from Santa Fe. I think this little bracelet did. Um, my leather bracelet. I we we did not coordinate <laughs> no, we this. Didn't, so. We did not coordinate this. My leather bracelet with a pearl clasp was given like to be my by my friend Jenny, who's the bead buyer for Hobby Lobby. Oh. Um, this bracelet came okay those of you who are in Oklahoma you will so you will so recognize this came from a friend of mine who gifted it to me from BC Clarks oh. we could probably both belt out the BC Clarks holiday song but we will we spare won't. we will spare our audience yes. um, and this bracelet came from one of my favorite stores in Salida Colorado currents which may or may not be there anymore and then just in general bangles because I'm a bangle girl my daisy my, my ring is one of my very, very favorite sterling silver rings. I got this at a store on, on Western Avenue, Mockingbird Manor. Yes, one of ever, my favorite places. Don't you just love that? It's a great antique it store is. on Western Avenue. Uh, my husband got me this years ago, I and love I, I love it. So there is our fashion ensemble du jour for you guys, and thanks for hanging out with us.